focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm glad you're joining us again today at Outreach Connection here. I'm Gary Schluckerberry, your host, and wherever you're at, maybe you want to give somebody a quick call and tell them, hey, Outreach Connection's on, and Gary's got a fabulous show about reaching out to the lost. And with that, I, I want to read to you what is the familiar text that I read so often out of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12 where we read, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. And this is just exactly what we're talking about here in our program today. Maybe somebody has been on the path and gotten off the path because of alcoholism, because of drug addiction, because of other problems in their life that comes up, and they lose out. They lose everything. They lose their family, and uh, they lose their home, and they're homeless. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the homeless. There's a couple of ministries in town that reach out to the homeless, and I have one of them with me here today. It's the FOM uh, ministries of Quincy, and I got with me Adam Osborne. God bless you, Adam, for being with me here around the table today. Yes, sir. And uh, we're going to talk about what your part is and everything in, in the FOM ministries. And then we have John Krause. John, thank you for coming and being around. I've, I've uh, refreshed my acquaintance <clears throat> with, with John and have known you before. And uh, here you are now moving in and working with the FOM Ministries also. <clears throat> and uh, so let's talk about that. Let's start that because I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about each one of you. I want you to <clears throat> tell our audience um, a little bit about yourselves. But first of all, I, what is the FOM Ministries? You want to begin, Adam, and just tell us what this is all about. Yes, sir. This is an opportunity just for a, a struggling, lost man that has lost everything or is trying to get what he has back. Okay, this is a men's yeah. ministry. Yes, sir. Yes. It's, uh, it's Christ-based, mm -hmm. and it's just an awesome opportunity just to grow and to build what you don't have or what you had back. Right, so, right. Yeah. Uh, some were living for the Lord, things were going well, but the old devil comes along and wrecks a person's life, and... Yeah. And there you are waiting to pick up the pieces, if you will, your ministry there. Yes, uh, John, tell us uh, now, how's, how do you do this? I mean, we're talking about a men's home, right? Yes. It, uh, uh, currently, we have uh, 12 beds in the home. And uh, um, sometimes uh, bed, bedding will come open. But uh, um, initially, we had began with uh, just word of mouth. Uh, guys were catching wind of what we were doing down on Six and Oak, and uh, and coming to us. Um, and uh, things have unfolded from there to a point where there's a, a process mm -hmm. of uh, coming to see the fishers of men and coming uh, to uh, have the Lord's help. Who uh, God has had His hand in that ministry and has built it up uh, with uh, through experience right. and through His Word. <clears throat> So it's men coming back to the, you're, you're, you're helping men to get back on the path yes. of following the Lord, or if they've never been on that path before, of following the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, as their lifestyle, you know, having Jesus in us. Well, but let, let me go here, John. <clears throat> tell us about yourself a little bit. Uh, uh, let, tell us, were you raised in a Christian home? How you found this ministry? Uh, where... What has going on in your life to get to where you're at today? Okay, well, I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, Dad would take us to church every Sunday. And uh, when I came to the age of accountability, um, mm -hmm. I ex accepted the Lord as my Savior. 
uh, with fear and trembling in front of Billy Graham at Milwaukee Brewer Stadium oh, wow. when I was okay. 14 years old. Yeah. Um, I uh, understood salvation and, and the purpose of Jesus Christ, but I would set my eyes on man, uh, on my father, um, on my, my parents, on my peers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and with that as my focus and not having my focus set on God and our Savior Jesus and His yeah. Holy, and the Holy Ghost, yeah. um, I would follow those mm -hmm. things. And... Um, uh, I had uh, done that for for years. Um, there's uh, been a, a, a just a one handful of men who have never given up on me, who've always um, supported me Thank and God have for been that. available yeah. to me. Yeah, and uh, um, I got uh, a message uh, about FOM Ministries and uh, that I had a place to go while I was in jail, mm -hmm. and uh, and that was. Uh, from Jason Bowerly, uh, a man who uh, our paths have crossed many times, and I've not always been a favorable person to him, but he still ne never closed the door on me, uh, mm. never gave up on me. And uh, so w when I was released, I, I went there, and uh, it's been quite a story. Uh, that's that kind of a lesson in itself when you stop and think about it, because it's teaching you it was teaching you at the same time, well, this fella, even though maybe we had our differences, I guess you were saying, this fella didn't give up on me for the Lord. Correct. He saw something in you that uh, maybe others didn't see. And so what, what I'm saying is what I'm thinking about here is that look how that has taught you and now look what you're doing. You're reaching out to other men who have been given up on and not giving up on them, right? That's correct. If I've learned uh, anything out of that, it's to always be available, to honor God. I like that. And yeah. for my brothers and sisters, yeah. um, and, and not turn my back, not uh, disconnect. Always be open and available. Right, right. And uh, I know this too. The devil hasn't stopped working on you. He doesn't stop working on any of us, you know. But we've got Jesus. Yes. And I love the Bible verse that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, meaning the devil. Greater is the Holy Ghost that is in us, Jesus Christ, that is in us than he that is in the world. And you know, with that, we can't lose. We can't lose. Well, Adam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you come from? Let our audience know. Where'd you come, come from? And how did you find the Lord? All right. Um, I grew up in an amazing Christian home. Okay. I had a loving parents, wow. an awesome sister, and um, I lost my father when I was younger, and uh, I fell into drug use, and I, I had a struggle with it for the last 15 years, mm -hmm. and um, I had a bad incident um, half a year ago or a year ago or so, and uh, I left town, came back on a plane, and immediately my best friend Corey and my sister introduced uh, Fishers of Men to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since then, I've, my walk with Christ has been side by side with him. Wow. And uh, I've been clean and sober. Yeah. I've been baptized. I've, I just had a total change of life. Praise the Lord. Yes, and I, I appreciate every second of my life now because it's with Christ. Yeah. What was it like when you gave your heart to the Lord? It was refreshing. Yeah, there, there you I, yeah. go. Refreshing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I can't even explain it. Yeah, it, it is hard to explain, you know. Mm. It's an experience that I hope those who are listening to us out there in our audience, it's an experience that if you've never experienced the Lord Jesus Christ as a born again experience, as a personal relationship, it is hard to explain. It's it's refreshing. It's It's releasing of all those wrong things that we have going on in our lives. He cleans us up because he has said in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. What happened to Adam? What happened to John? What happened to me? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what God did. I just had to preach a little bit there. Good. I hope that was okay. So I didn't mean to interrupt you oh, there, uh, Adam. With, um, But the thing is, is look how now... God, I'm going to just say, has elevated you yeah, yeah. because you are uh, over the men of that, of that house, right? 
Yes. I mean, you're, what's, what's the title um, that you have? Well, if I can use a title, if you don't mind. But you came in, you stayed straight, you've lived for God, and you, God has elevated you right. to yes. a position to overseer. Can I use that word? Uh, just part of the ministry team. Just part of the ministry yeah. team. I understand. No but titles, at the same yeah. time, you weren't, you're, you're, you're not where you were. No. Okay, as you've walked with the Lord. He's made me a better person so I could be yeah. more viewed as, you know, somebody yeah. that they could look up to and maybe hold them accountable yeah. to their actions as the way I yeah. was held when <laughs> I first started, yes. You two guys, I tell you, let me, uh, the, the audience out there, um, they, they told me before we went on air, and, and you're seeing it right here, and here I am trying to pull something out here, they're just humble. They said, we just want to be humble. We're, we're just a part of the team, you know, just like what Adam was saying. Yeah, God has elevated him, but he's just a part of the team, and that's what we all are. And uh, just two humble men, what God has done in your lives. Yeah. 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 So, okay, how many men are, are there in the home, at the, either one of you? Uh, how many men are in the home? There's uh, 12 beds, okay. and including one of them that Adam resides in. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, currently, uh, we've uh, we've been given another home uh, with finances, and uh, we're uh, working on that and um, making it beautiful. Um, you know, I was reading last night uh, Matthew six twenty two that uh, the eye is the light to the body, and when the eye is good, you see light. And walking into the fishers of men homes um, is. A beautiful display. Uh, mm -hmm. Some guy had taken neon uh, cue cards and wrote scriptures on them and taped them uh, <laughs> in various places in doorways and things like that. Awesome. Um, yeah. The uh, uh, there is a, a one room that is a, uh, takes up an entire floor of one of the buildings that we have that we have eight beds in, mm -hmm. and I believe that the close community uh, with the men side by side with each other like that raises the level of accountability that uh, oh, we yes. can watch after each other mm -hmm. um, that you know the enemy won't try to s slip in and if he does it it's get caught it gets caught quick mm -hmm. enough because yeah. how the Lord and his spirit has his hand in that home um, anything that is not of him we pray all the time that it be rooted out yeah yeah and I like that accountability yeah. yes sir because we all need somebody to be accountable to you know to help us in our lives, and I, I like that accountability. Um, so the how you're you're in the process. You at Six and Oak, you you bought another house, and you're refurbishing. I know I've been by there, and I've seen the dumpster out there, and all the trash, the cleaning it out. In fact, um, I, I have let me tell you, 50 years ago when I was 18 years old, well, been longer than that. As I think about it, I lived in that house. That was my first apartment. And over the years, though, it kind of turned into something other, yes. a different type of a house. And uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's a, really, it's a nice building. It's a nice house that you all have got there and that you're refurbishing. And what you're doing, looking at it, I, I love, you know, looking in the front porch there, I love the colors and everything. <laughs> That you're doing on that, and to make it homey, yes. To make it presentable for, and I like the scripture verses and the other, like somebody has put on the walls, and <clears throat> make it God conducive, you know, so that you can feel the presence of the Lord and the peace of God when you walk in there. Now, how do you, um, how how do you get uh, men? I mean, how, how do you decide who's going to, because there's a lot of homeless. Yes. Out there, how's this done? Uh, generally, we uh, there's certain criteria. Um, we're looking at uh, a gentleman who has absolutely nothing to fall back on, um, who uh, doesn't have a home, doesn't have uh, family, or family has disconnected to mm -hmm. that individual. Um, uh, there's uh, oftentimes too uh, just a man who is completely homeless, mm -hmm. where if 
there's nothing that we can do to assist them or any of the other uh, homeless ministries here in Quincy, then they're going to be sleeping either in an abandoned building or under a bridge. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that's the first thing that we look at. And then uh, we'll start to ask questions. Um, we have an interview process after the individual has filled out an application that we'll, we'll ask, um, is the things that they have been doing that has gotten them homeless something that they are willing to change? And then we incorporate that um, with everything that has been done to me while I was living there that uh, the Bible has taught me uh, because of the ongoing um, gatherings that we have, the uh, scheduled meetings about uh, what a man looks like in the Bible, uh, mm. what the kingdom of heaven looks like that Jesus Christ had taught us yeah. out of the Bible. Wow, I like that. Yeah, and, and um, I just want to say for those out there that are listening and what you're talking about is word of mouth. That's how you found it, yes. by word of mouth. And uh, maybe you know somebody that is homeless or is looking for a place, or maybe you are someplace watching this television show right now, and you're hearing about this ministry. Uh, get touch with them. They're down on uh, 6th Street. Uh, what, what is your address? 609. 609. You don't have a phone to call them or anything, but... Just go down there and, and look up at him. He'll be there and uh, uh, talk to him about it and uh, see if they can't help you with that. And then let me say, too, it always takes funds because mm -hmm. this is a non-for-profit organization, and it takes funds to build the houses, to, to remodel the, like the other house that you're doing now. Maybe you're a pastor out there and... Um, uh, you're looking for some kind of a mission effort that is local. If you're local in the Quincy area, community, maybe you're looking for a, someone to help in a, with a missions project in your church budget and everything that's, that uh, you, can, you can reach out to. Well, right here is, there's always, a, you can go online. Uh, they, they have their website. In fact, you can, uh, it's... Um, www.fomquincy.com. I went on there and pulled up. They've got a beautiful web page. And uh, you can get in, in touch with them with what PayPal, I think, is one of the ways. And, uh, but if your church can help support them, you know, and, and you're looking for something, an, an effort to do for the next year, right here, I, I would suggest plug in to them because that's, that's something that, of course, is always needed. Now, with that, we've been talking an awful lot about Jesus. We've been talking an awful, awful lot of, uh, about the Lord. <clears throat> and um, do you have, do the men have Bible studies? Do yes. they go to church? Tell us what your daily activities are. Um, we've got a certain criteria that, that's that been found that has just worked in people's lives amazing. Uh, we get um, an elder from the church has a Bible study on Mondays. Okay. We have just uh, a group of guys that, out of their own heart, feels that they they just love doing it. On Tuesdays they come. We have, you know, a Bible session and okay. we get really in depth also. Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday we got um, life skills that a lady comes and just gives you know just everyday life, balancing mm -hmm. checkbooks, struggles and skills, right. you know, daily news and right. you know we just find it comfortable that, you know, life skills are, are life lessons. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Thursdays we have, um, we, you know, we try to go to church if, with the guys that can't make it on Sundays. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have uh, CR on Friday, yeah. Celebrate Recovery program that mm -hmm. is just working wonders in people's lives and Great. also in the guys at our program. So, yeah. um, so, so they, now, now, uh, can they go to the church of their choice? Or do, do they pretty well stay together with the same they church? Can. We, we ask as a group <clears throat> that they attend a few services on the weekend with us mm -hmm. as a group mm -hmm. and just to see how, if they like that unity. And, and that, but if there is a church of their choice, uh, we, we allow them to go to the church where they choose to worship. Okay. Um, and now do they, um, do they have jobs? Do they, are they looking for a job, We're looking for work? If they don't have a job, how does all that work? It is. That is a, uh, one of the requirements that they, they seek employment. Uh, oftentimes a guy will come and doesn't have an ID, so 
um, with that life skills, uh, Cindy, she assists them uh, with getting their birth certificate so they can get okay. an ID to go look, at, get employment. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Uh, another thing that in in that schedule that we were talking about uh, on Saturday mornings, we spend an hour giving back to the community. We'll be out there cleaning up the street, oh, wow. or if there's a need somewhere okay. into around town, we we look for it and then go provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, community service. That that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, well, it, it it to me it, it helps them to say the importance of you know those life skills too. You know, that's, that's part of, of living for the Lord with life skills. Now, um, do, they, do they have to pay anything to stay with you? If they've got a job, how does that work? There is. Uh, we ask that they give back to the ministry. Um, and the scale of that is uh, with your income. Uh, we ask that 25% be given back to the ministry okay. um, up to $75 per week. Okay. Uh, that w helps us assist and actually gives us a good feeling that, that as a, a ministry home, we are providing for ourselves. Yeah. We can function uh, yeah. with ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other things like property taxes and, and other items, um, the community, local businesses, um, uh, this community of Quincy has been overwhelmingly supportive of us. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's been amazing by providing uh, materials that we need, mm -hmm. uh, paints, roofing materials, um, uh, flooring materials. Um, it, everything that we have acquired through that has all been through donations mm -hmm. and, and support. Um, well, now, what about food? What about cooking? Do you have a chef? <laughs> or is there somebody who takes responsibility of that? How does that work, Adam? Uh, we independently just try to cook for ourselves. Okay. I mean, we, we all have, you know, certain funds from each individual that, you know, we'll, we'll cook. We try to, you know, have a one night a week where we'll cook like a meal for the house. And everybody can eat together. Yes, we'll yeah. sit around a table, we'll pray, and we'll... Okay. Just have that little tight community mm -hmm. and just reflect over the the day or the week, you know, so yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, well, and I can't help but think of a Bible verse, you know, there's, even with a the group, there needs to be that unity, like you said. And I'm thinking of Hebrews 10, 25, where the Lord says, uh, neglect not the assembling together of yourselves, as you see the end times or the last day approaching and everything and certainly that not only in Bible study but there's that fellowship of over food you know there's a good where you can just sit back and relax and maybe I guess talk about your day you know or what happened at work or, or different mm -hmm. things like that yeah okay now let's let's go to another step <clears throat> who cleans who cleans? Who cleans? House. Oh, nice. Um, each each one of our beds are assigned a certain chore, okay. so we we're taking you know, or okay. taking it out upon ourselves yeah. to you know, like let's say there's a first bed upstairs, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he's doing the kitchen okay. and sweep, mop, and wipe down shelves, and you know the second bed would be you know the flooring and the living areas. Mm -hmm. So we're all accountable for each each chore. So at the end of the day. Our house was nice, you know, yeah. so um, we even had a, a ladies from Lima <clears throat> that came down and volunteered their time to, you oh, know, just okay. clean up the house because, you know, that's all men there. Yeah, you know? right, so right. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't get dusted sometimes in <laughs> certain areas. So Do the ladies touch on it? Yeah, yeah so okay. it's really nice. We thank okay. them. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I've, I've been there, but I've visited it before, and uh, if everything was neat. Yes. You know, that's been a couple of years since I was in there, but everything was neat and clean. The guys, they had their beds all made and, and everything every day. And, and uh, you, you provide a good home atmosphere, you know, with it, with the group of men, you know, that are living there. And uh, um, well, I tell you, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you found the Lord, Adam. Yes. You know, I'm glad you came back to the Lord. I tell you, there's, because uh, I, I told you before, the, the glow of the Lord is just written all over you. I can, was a talk to you, and I see you're 
feel your passion and your excitement. And John, just uh, the same thing here, you know, that you guys are proud of what you're doing and reaching out yes. for lost souls. And I tell you, you know, I, I know that what we have done here on the program uh, today, that maybe you're out there and you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, I'm hopeless. No, you're not hopeless. Just like John said, there's somebody that's there wanting to help you and support you. Here is this ministry, FOM Ministries of Quincy. And you can get in touch with them, and they're there to help. And, and check into it and find out if you need to. Now, let me, just, let me just talk to you for a minute, because if you need to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ, I just talked to a gentleman the other day. He gave his heart to the Lord. I uh, let him had the privilege of leading him in, leading him in a uh, sinner's prayer and um, asking for forgiveness and asking the Lord to come into his heart. He was raised in a Christian home. He went. To, he knew the Bible and could quote scriptures and everything. And I said, well, have you really ever asked the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart? He said, you know, I've never done that. That's what must be done. And how do we do that? I've already quoted to you on air here the uh, 1 John 1, 9, one of my favorite verses to you to use, <clears throat> along with John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, but have everlasting life. And the 1 John 1, 9, let me quote that again to you, that if we confess our sins... That, that is, getting them out, naming them, talking to God and say, Oh, Lord, forgive me of such and such, or doing this. It says then that He is faithful and just to forgive us, because Jesus Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. He is faithful and just to forgive us. It's a done deal. He already paid the price on the cross of our sins. And then the greatest thing is, as I told Adam, which, which you can, you, you've seen these two gentlemen here, <clears throat> they, are, they are cleansed. The Lord cleanses us then from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness will pop up, but hey, we're cleansed from that. In the name of Jesus, get out of here. Don't do that. That's what it is. So you, you can do that. Just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Take charge of my life. I want to serve you, and I love you. And he does. Don't try to understand it. Just do it, and you're saved. That's all there is to it. I tell you, the Lord loves you. God loves you very much. Don't ever forget that. And I know, Adam, you found that out, didn't you? Yes. Thank you for being with me around the table here. Thanks, it's sir. a pleasure to get to know you, brother, and see the glory of the Lord all over you. John, thank you for being around the table and seeing you again and seeing what the Lord is doing through both of your lives and how you're working for the Lord one day at a time. God bless you for being here. Thank you, sir. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301. sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Today's encouraging.